today's new camera day. And as we all know, camera day is the best day. I got the GX80 and I thought I would go over all the things I do when I get a new camera. Just like a little setup, but my personal setup, your judgment may vary. Let's do it. First of all, the jingle jangles. I hate them, I hate them, what's the point of them? I mean, I know the point is to put like a camera strap to them, but I hate them. So first of all, they've got to go. One down. Should not be let loose with a knife. Ah. No more jingle jangles. Next. We don't need this silly thing. And then we'll move on to my first bugbear. The first thing I always do whenever I have a new camera. And that's to get rid of the beep. Ugh. Ugh. Can't have the beep. Much better. Obviously, next, we have to post a photograph on Instagram. For the next few steps, I need my computer. There's some great things about the GX80, but two things I really don't like is it doesn't have Cine like D when it comes to video shooting modes, but luckily a very handy person has hacked this online, so I'm gonna get that on board imminently. And also, I want to convert it to NTSC so I can get 60 frames a second in HD instead of 50 frames. So before, these are the settings. So we have 50p as the most that it can do. Et que vous cherchez un moyen d'avoir le mode photo de lecture et le bouton du lock autofocus. Here I have a UK model Pal GX80. Okay. And in the video settings, you can see that I have 4K at 25p or 24p. Built in. And full HD at 50p or 25p. Excellent. But I want the 30p and 60p modes of the NTSC version. Me too. So fair with the you should see an exclamation mark ah, inside the camera yes. on the screen as the camera shuts off. You're getting the credit. Now, when you turn you the camera on again, are getting the credit because none of the other videos worked. Well done, guy. And now you can see, with no technical difficulties whatsoever, I have the correct settings. Booyah! And, and this is a serious tip that I always, you just have to do. I'm going to buy some spare batteries because batteries are the life and soul of your new gadget and you need to make sure you have loads of them. Sold! As always with Panasonic cameras there are quite a few function buttons so I'm going to set those how I want them. So in C mode, which is now on the top, if you're in that and press menu the first thing that comes up is C1, C2 and C3. So now I'm in... C1 is full HD, C2 is 60p, and C3 is 4K24. So I can toggle between all of these really quickly. In here, there's just a couple of tweaks. For a start, we can get off JPEG and get onto RAW. Aspect ratio, I used to switch it to a standard ratio, but I'm really enjoying the 4x3 now, to be honest. Burst rate, I'm gonna to set to medium. Because while it does have a fast burst rate, it has a quite a small buffer. So you're stuffed if you fill your buffer up and the action's still going on. So I'd rather have less speed and, and less buffering, if that makes sense. Now bracketing is something that I do quite often and I would like to put that into a custom mode in the menu. And I keep my cell timer at two because I tend to use it for long exposures rather than anything else. I like to have my ISO increments in thirds because I think it gives you a bit more wiggle room. And I like my extended ISO on. What that means is now we can go down below the 200 mark, down to 100, which is pretty cool because when that's off, the lowest you can go to is 200. And sometimes you just need a lower ISO, even if it's not the optimal for your camera long shutter noise reduction I turn off because you're going to do a lot of post-production with long exposure images anyway and there'll be a better quality of image if you do it yourself rather than let the camera do it. 
Again, I think I'm in the minority, but I always turn my assist lamp off. I don't think it really helps too much and it just looks awful, particularly if you're taking photographs in a sort of a group situation. So I turn that off. Gotta have your histogram on, man. Keep that in the corner, out of the way. And I love my guidelines, gotta keep the guidelines on. I'll have me some zebrin, but I set it at 100%. So that if anything does zebra, you know you've completely screwed up. Right, function one is now currently on post focus. And I'm never ever really gonna use that. So I'm going to put it on bracketing. Bracketing, excellent. So that now when I press bracketing, I'll take five photographs, but they'll all be different exposures. So you can put them all together. This is what I usually toggle anyway on this button. So you can have your eyepiece and the display off, your display on and your eyepiece off, or both automatically. And I have that exact same button in the exact same place on my GH5 and G7. Because when you're filming video, sometimes you end up trying to touch the screen and the screen goes off and it's super annoying. So that is a must for me. Super. And just so you know, this error is totally okay. It's fine. So there we go. I think I'm ready to use it now. I've got it all set up how I want it. There's just one last thing for me to do. And that's to introduce the new member of the family to the rest of the bunch. So what are your must-haves when you first set up a camera? What do you prioritise and get just how you want it first? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, as always, for watching. I'm gonna do a full review on this soon and also a little comparison with the G7 as well, I think. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. Thank you for watching, goodbye.